guys so in this video i'm starting a new series on my channel called true crime and tutorial tuesdays um but basically where i'm doing my makeup creating this makeup look whilst telling you a true crime story um obviously it's not really a tutorial tutorial i'm just you know doing my makeup sort of as i'm telling the story so it's not about makeup really at all but the makeup products i have used will be listed in the description below um, so I thought I'd start the first video of this series with the um, disappearance of Claudia Lawrence who was from York which is where I'm from. So I hope you carry on watching and enjoy the video. So let's jump straight into the case. So Claudia Elizabeth Lawrence was born in Malton, North Yorkshire on the 27th of February 19. 74, which makes her 35 years old at the time of her disappearance in 2009. She was raised in Heaton area of York, which if you didn't know, I am actually from York myself. So this case is, you know, very close to home. Um, this is why I've chosen to do the disappearance of Claudia Lawrence as my first true crime and tutorial Tuesday video. Um, as I remember this being all over the news and the papers and all everyone was talking about um, as I would be in like 8 or 9 um, when she went missing. She was raised by her father Peter Lawrence who was a solicitor and her mother Joan and she worked as a chef at the Goodricks College at the Roger Kirk Centre of the University of York where she generally worked more in shifts. So we're going to jump back to um, the 18th of March 2009 and this was the last day that you know she was really seen so she finished her shift at the university um, and starts to walk home because at the time her Vauxhall Corsa, which I've got a Corsa as well, um, had actually broken down so she was actually having to walk to and from work because she didn't have her car and it was about 45 minutes for her to you know walk there so she was starting her walk back home when one of her friends that was driving past spotted her and offered her, when they were on Melrose Gate and offered her a lift which she, she accepted and she was then dropped off at her cottage on Hillworth Road at approximately 10 to 3 that day. A friend later saw her returning at 5 minutes past 3 um, and there was reported sighting in between of her posting a letter nearby so we don't know the contents of the letter, who it was to, what it was for and it just kind of seemed a bit unusual because obviously nowadays people don't really send letters it's all you know texts phone calls zoom everything like that so it just add that bit of mystery into the case but later on um she rings her parents and speaks to them and she makes plans with her mum to go and see her on mother's day um, and then at 8.23 she sends her last text to her friend and then the last text she receives is from a male friend named Steve who worked, named Steve who worked in a bar in Cyprus and that was the last text that she received um, that night and she's not been seen or heard from since the 18th of March. So then we go on to the 19th of March, the day afterwards, where she failed to turn up for her 6am shift at the university and her manager attempted to call her mobile but did not receive an answer. So at 8 minutes past 12, Claudia's phone was switched off with later investigations showing that this was done deliberately. And in the evening, she was meant to be meeting up with her best friend, Susie Cooper, at Mag's Head Pub, which was literally like four doors down from her house, but she didn't turn up. Um, I did think it was a bit odd that her friend didn't actually just 
go to her house and check up on her if she was, you know, at the pub or going to the pub anyway. You know, that the extra two minute walk, if that, that it would take for her to just go and check in wouldn't really be too much hassle. And then the next day, the 20th of March, that friend um, continued trying to contact Claudia and with no luck, she contacted her father. Um, Peter Lawrence who went round to her cottage and used a spare key to go and investigate for himself when he didn't find her he reported her missing to North Yorkshire police and they started their investigation. Police found that the only things missing from her home were her rucksack, her mobile phone and chef's wives which suggests that she was like she left her house um, to go to work that morning. No, none of those items has since been recovered. After the appeal was released, there were two potential sightings reported of a woman with man on the morning of the 19th, formed by a cyclist on Melrose Gate Bridge at 5.35am and again 30 minutes later when a commuter noticed a couple outside the university who looked like they were arguing. The man was described as skinny, about 5 foot 6, wearing dark hoodie, and there was also um, CCTV footage later released of a suspicious looking man at the back of Claudia's house on Hoof Place from 5.50am that morning, again in a black hoodie. So there's this mystery man who she may have been involved with. So then we're going to skip to the 24th of April 2009 and detectives just say that her disappearance has been treated as a suspected murder investigation and a £10,000 reward is offered for information that could lead to the conviction of those responsible. And then we're going to the 2nd of June 2009 and the case was covered on an episode of BBC's Crime Watch where Detective Sergeant Ray Galloway was leading the search and appeared and said that after 11 weeks they were still without any strong leads into this suspected murder. He's also quoted to say that as the investigation has developed, it's become apparent that some of Claudia's relationships had an element of complexity and mystery to them. I'm certain that some of these relationships were not known to her family or friends. Then her father, Peter Lawrence, appeared on the BBC's Today programme saying that, quoting, this is quoting him saying, we really wonder whether certainly recently she had time to form any relationships other than those which Though, than those about which we know. She saw her best friend Susie and myself very regularly and she worked in quite a strenuous job, we wonder about it. And Susie also regularly, Susie also regularly disputed of claims um, about Claudia saying that she was shy. So then we're jumping to September 2009 where police extended the search to Cyprus as Claudia would go there often on holidays and um, she had friends over there such as Steve and they wondered if she'd maybe run away and try to start a new life over there um, but they didn't really find anything of significance. So now we're jumping to March 2010 and based on new information, police begin searching various areas of York, including Heslington and Lanmere University, including a children's play area. It was later stated that officers had not found any new leads from these searches and nothing of significance had been discovered. So pretty much all the um, investigations that they are doing isn't really turning up much. Um, much information and it's not really you know getting any answers that they were hoping to find so then in 2013 the north yorkshire police set up a new major crimes unit 
which was established specifically to look into kidnapped, raped and stalled, stalled cases such as Claudia's, using advanced techniques and technology that had not been previously available. They found additional fingerprints and a man's DNA on the cigarette end in her car. Work surrounding her Samsung D900 mobile phone showed from cell activity, cell site activity, that she was in the Acom area of York in the weeks leading up to her disappearance and that her phone was deliberately turned off at about 10 past 12 on Thursday, March the 19th, 2009. So basically what we learned from that is obviously whoever whoever's DNA was on that cigarette but it wasn't super super recently because her she hadn't had a car because it was broken down not working she was having to walk oh, she was having to walk to and from work um but obviously it is of some significance um, because that man may have been involved in her disappearance and that she spent some time in the Acom area of York which I've been to I know very well and I wouldn't say it's one of the like best areas of York it's you know not it's not got a good like reputation um it's it's not the worst but there's some bits of it that are really not you know that are a bit like chubby not very not very um nice <laughs> so um it obviously doesn't say whereabouts that she was but it just has Aikam as a general um but that's weird to you know think again um with her being from york living in york like i do that we could have both been in Aikam at the same point potentially <laughs> way back in 2009 because my opticians is in Aiken and one of the doctors that I go to is also in Aiken so you never really know and it doesn't really say what importance her being in Aiken has to the investigation it just says that she was there um so yeah it's a bit must have been significant for it to be included you know in this in the findings of the investigation and then we jump to the 19th of march 2014 and it's been five years since claudia disappeared and officers discover at her home the fingerprints of people who have still not come forward to the investigation so they've got fingerprint evidence of people who i'm assuming they don't know the identity of um otherwise they would have looked into that um and they just you know were hoping that they would come forward and they haven't so then we're going to the 13th of may 2014 and a 59 year old man is arrested on suspicion of murder he is then later released on police bail and eventually released without charge on the 17th of November 2014. So it's widely speculated that she um, had a lot of relationships with married elderly, not el married older men. Um, and so this may be why most of the suspects in the investigation are a lot older than her um, and then the media did portray her as sort of you know not in the best of lights which didn't help her investigation because instead of people seeing her for the woman who she is they were like oh she's you know this woman that's going around having affairs and you know the, it just cast a bad light on her name and you know made people not really care um like they did before this 
information was revealed to the public. But then on the 23rd of March 2015, a man in his 50s is arrested on suspicion of murdering Claudia and he's also released on bail the following day and then is um, released without charge as well. So then on the 22nd of April 2015, three men all in their 50s and from York are uh, arrested on suspicion of murder and released on bail. Then on the 17th of September 2015, a file of evidence on four men arrested on suspicion of murder is sent by North Yorkshire Police to the Crown Prosecution Service so it can so they can consider whether to bring charges and then on the 8th of March 2016, Crown Prosecution Service decided not to bring charges to the four men due to insignificant evidence. Um, so I'd be really interested to know um, what the reasoning for these four particular men was to, because obviously to take it that far there must have been you know, a good amount of suspicion um otherwise you know they wouldn't have bothered and yeah that's all the information that's given about the four men you don't really get told anything else so obviously these four men must have played you know quite a big part up to her disappearance of all wouldn't have bothered to you know try and put all that effort in to get them to um, consider charging them so yeah it's because they don't have they didn't have enough evidence but there must have been like probable reason and you know a fair amount um, you know, some sort of reason for them to have got to that stage in the first place. It would be interesting to know a bit more about all of that, but that's all the information we have available to us on those four men. But then from 2015 to 2019 there's not really much um, to add in between those you know those four years nothing is really um, going on with the case unfortunately there's no new leads. Um, it also seems odd that the DNA that they do have, they've not been able to match to anyone or get any results from it because you'd think they would have got a bit further with that. And there wasn't loads of leads anyway to, be to begin with. Um, it, is, um, it is known that her mother doesn't believe that Claudia is dead, her mum thinks that she was like sex trafficked um, or something of that sort of nature um, which if she was like taken when she was walking on her way to work that you know could be a very possible um, very possibly have happened to her unfortunately and um, her dad has actually kept up payments on the cottage as well. Um, I'm not sure if he still is currently, but um, I know that he was doing that in hopes of her being able to return home um, at some point. Um, her father has, you know, done a lot of campaigning and stuff like that to do with you know her case and other 
missing persons cases and to do with the laws surrounding them the detective that was um, on the case has recently retired so then we go to June 2019 and this is where we get the last bits of um, information that is available on this case unfortunately um there isn't anything more recent that i was able to find um so it's been 11 years now obviously in june 2019 it was 10 years since she had gone missing the government introduced the guardianship missing persons act 2017 informally known as Claudia's Law and this law would allow for a guardian to be appointed to manage the affairs of the person who, been, who has been missing for 90 days or more. So like I mentioned earlier, um, her father kept up mortgage payments and everything on her cottage in the hopes of her being able to return and it also proved handy as well because when they went back in after doing obviously like the first initial searches in 2009 after she was first um a missing person they obviously as the years went on i think it was 2013 went back and did a, another search obviously in those four years technology and techniques had advanced so they went back and luckily were able to do that whereas if her father hadn't kept up the payments and everything someone else probably would have moved in to her cottage and obviously it would have all been gone because someone else would be living there and none of that evidence would be still you know there for them to find later it was also known in the beginning of the case that claudia's mother um wasn't informed straight away of her daughter's disappearance i think it was like a few days later that her mother joan found out about the disappearance and she wasn't um able to go and look at claudia's uh, cottage and like view the like crime scene and when she did see the pictures from the crime scene years later she did notice things that weren't were a bit out of place weren't quite right that obviously police and the people that were inspecting her cottage wouldn't know because obviously they didn't know Claudia like her family did so peter lawrence is quoted saying that this will make such a difference to the lives of hundreds of families who have been waiting for so long for it enabling them to deal with their missing loved ones financial and property affairs in the same way as everyone else is able to on a daily basis um so that was one good thing to come out of it i guess for her father so there are many different theories of what has happened or could have happened to Claudia. Um, obviously they are, you know, it's suspected that she is dead but her mother does not believe that. She thinks that she was like sex, sex trafficked or like kidnapped, you know, and is still alive. Um, but there's also like the possibility that she could have gone to cyprus although her passport and like handbag and stuff like that was found at her home so if she had um she would have had to you know have gone under a different identity um you know and maybe she did just want to start a new life for herself and so she you know got a fake passport with a new identity and she just did that but then why would she make plans with her mum to see her on mother's day you know it doesn't quite add up and make sense um but unfortunately it does look 
likely that she probably was murdered um, and obviously there's people that know um, what happened to her but no one has come forward with you know significant evidence which is such a shame for her family and friends as you know they're not going to get the closure maybe one day um, they will find out what did happen to Claudia way back in 2009 but yeah I hope you guys all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.